What's up, Dirty Cons? Um, I think I got a camera that works. I'm very excited about this, even though this. Whew. So I remember back in uh, 2012 thinking, this has got to be the worst year ever. Now that was after 2006, which I thought was the worst year ever. Um, so I've had more than a couple of worst years. And uh, looking back, they were rough. Um, uh, without getting into complete details, uh, raising two boys on your own is not exactly the easiest thing, uh, nor would I wish it upon our worst enemy, so, uh, not that raising kids isn't a good thing, but there's a reason it takes two people to make kids, so, um, 2012, 2013, like, this year... Uh, you know, I look at the abject poverty and just the whole, you know, people just don't care about each other. You know, the, we care more about animals. Do you know a homeless person with a dog is more likely to get money than a homeless person all by themselves? That's why the most time they have, because people will pay to take care of the animal, but they don't care about the person. And... I think that sucks. I think that statement on uh, on mankind and where we are or what we feel is uh, inadequate, for lack of a better word. But, um, yeah, so I went yesterday to see Dr. Jonathan Shea. Uh, he's the man who wrote um, Achilles in Vietnam and Odysseus in America. Very well spoken. Uh, ha I have a really funny anecdote for years later when I'm old. Because uh, I got to talk to him before and after. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, pretty smart guy. Um, very, very quiet, reserved. Uh, but speaks with a lot of compassion and knowledge on uh, veterans and PTSD issues. Like, he, he understands, he speaks the language. So it was pretty interesting to hear him um people ask questions about you know modern day society go forward vets versus uh vietnam vets is there a difference um really good questions uh i got the last question my last question because he had talked earlier said that he had a, a dream of peace and that he had met a general at the air force academy and that he had said he had the same dream of peace and uh it's funny because I myself have a dream of peace. Um, I don't know if it's attainable or achievable, but um, you know, we all have a dream. Um, yeah, we all have a dream. So I asked him what was his dream of peace and how would he obtain it? And uh, he drew it back to until everybody feels secure and safe inside themselves, inside their countries, you know, it'll never happen, and, uh, was able to say, you know, genocide, you know, when your country kills a part of your people, you know, how can you ever feel peace, or how will peace ever be achieved if your own country will, you know, do things to you, but this country has had its own genocides and issues and things, so, um, it was a good, it was really good, I was, I was very glad I got to see him, and so I'm very grateful to, uh, the University of Incarnate Word for bringing him out uh, for this speech uh, or talk. And, um, I don't know. If you had a chance to see him, see him. Buy the book. Books. Uh, he spoke on moral injury. And uh, listen to this guy talk. I, it was like, he was like, oh, here you go. <laughs> Here's what's wrong with it. And so it's hilarious because of uh, I don't know, I thought he was talking to me, so it was very, uh, enlightening. Uh, I think the more we can figure out about ourselves, the further we'll go. In, in your case, the more you figure out about yourself, the, the better your underwater will be, the better your, uh, determination and commitment will be. You just gotta figure out how you tick, what makes you tick. Um, he did, like, he brought up community. He's like... 
uh, uh, most a lot of the problem is that our community is letting us down by uh, not having good leaders and you know not so much a a just cause maybe but not just cause just a just cause totally different things um it w I know I'm once again my lack of words that would capture or explain but uh community messes up and community is going to fix us so he was big on you need a support system you need you don't necessarily need a community of more than two if you've got you and another person that's a dais and that's a community that's a group and that's what we need so um we need to ask each other for help and we need to give each other help uh, i've said this before but in the, the code of bushido uh, compassion is there you cannot You can't love life if you don't love people. And, and I say that as, because there's a lot of people that I strongly dislike, um, but it's probably because I don't know them. <laughs> but I, I think a lot of people just aren't appreciative of what they got. And I'm very appreciative of what I got. I'm very appreciative to be happy and alive and still kicking. And so, community. We need each other, and that's the only way we're going to fix it. Uh, I was talking to a younger person <laughs> the other day, young Cone, and you know, he's like, I hate my generation. I'm like, alright, I agree with you. I'm not a big fan of your generation, but your generation has the greatest potential out of everybody on this planet to fix this mess. Uh, you guys just got to come together and make it happen. Uh, a lot going on. We can learn a lot. You can learn from, a lot from old people. You can learn a lot from young people. And you can learn a lot from anybody. You can learn something from everybody. You just got to be open for it. And unfortunately, I don't think we're completely open for it. Um, I do. Oh, man. He said, if not for Vietnam, we never would have had Iraq. And... It, that made sense, you know. Iraq was our feel good, we're gonna make the world a better place kind of thing, but I don't think there's really been a good war since World War II. And and you know, and he brought up a good point about the World War II vets. He said, you know, you think those guys are are stoic and they didn't say anything because they were strong. And th there is that is part of the answer, but it's the John Wayne syndrome. It's I don't want anyone to know I'm weak or that I'm scared, or that I'm worried, or that I have nightmares, or this stuff bothers me, so I'm not going to tell anybody. So, we may have misinterpreted stoicism for outright fear. Uh, I mean, after World War II, they built all of these uh, mental health facilities, huge, for all the guys that were shell-shocked and trauma and, uh, you know, not doing too well. But you never hear about that. And I thought that was a really good point. So, um, because we don't ever talk about anything. I mean, you and I, we talk. <laughs> but the rest of the world's not talking. Uh, and if they are, I don't think they're talking about the right things. You know, we gotta fix a mess, not just make new messes. And before we go on to other messes, we need to fix the mess we've already got. Uh, man, it's way too boring to preach. I did not intend to do this. Um, but I would encourage you, Dr. Jonathan Shea, if you get a chance uh, to check him out. Really good. Really, really good. <laughs> um, so that's it. Hope training's going well. Hope life's good. Don't worry, life's still beautiful. The, the ups and the downs, they all make it part of what life is, and uh, the bad parts make the good parts even better. And the good parts outnumber the bad parts, just sometimes the bad parts are a little deep. You know, friends, 
seeing hungry kids on the side of the road type of stuff. Uh, I think if you're not bothered by it, then there's something wrong with you. You gotta have compassion for your fellow men. Uh, men being mankind. Uh, yeah, that's it. So, stay out of trouble. Make sure you run with good people. Make sure you do the right thing. Uh, stay healthy both physically, mentally, spiritually, and uh, be good. I'll chat with you later. Here we go.